Aloha! This is Pipeline Audio with a tutorial on getting started in Reaper. Regate Basics Noise gates are very powerful tools. They normally don't add anything fun and they aren't a glamour effect by any means, but when you need one, you really need one. One of the few early positive points of using a computer for audio was that while mixing, the computer already knows what's coming up, allowing dynamic effects to do wonders almost impossible in the analog world. Of course, that point seemed to be lost on most of the developers, and except for a few proprietary plugins, it was only recently that truly powerful, better than analog gates were available in native DAWs. Regate combines the best features of archaic hardware gates and the extreme possibilities of the DAW environment. Let's look at the controls. On the left we have the threshold control. When the threshold fader is below the level of the audio, it does nothing. Garbage in, garbage out. The threshold fader sets the level where the noise gate operates. When signal falls below the threshold setting, the noise gate attenuates the audio according to how the rest of the controls are set. Next to the threshold fader, Regate's meter shows the signal level that the threshold control is dealing with. This signal is provided by the detector circuit, which we'll get to in a minute. Now let's look at the envelope section right in the middle of the GUI. First there is pre-open. In a traditional gate, no matter how well you set it up, no matter how fast it's detector, it's always going to take some time to unmute the output. This can result in clicking noises or drum transients getting lost. Pre-open sets the attack to start before the signal crosses the threshold. No surprise, Reaper can see into the future. Get used to this control and you'll avoid some of the more common qualms of using traditional gates. Next there's the attack control. This sets the amount of time it takes for the noise gate to open fully. Slow it down a bit if you're getting objectionable clicks. You can also use really slow attacks to turn a hard sound into a mellow one. Halfway through the envelope controls is the hold. The hold control sets the minimum amount of time between the end of the attack curve and the time the release takes over once the signal has gone below the threshold. While the attack and release turn up and turn down to and from unity gain, hold stays constant. If you are meaning to transparently pass the sounds you want, the hold control should be set long enough to pass the relevant part of your signal. Hold can really be handy with guitar parts in order to cut down on the gate chatter between notes. Below the hold fader is the release control. The counterpart to the attack circuit which sets the amount of time it takes for the gate to close fully after the signal goes below the threshold and after the hold range. This setting is critical to keep your signal sounding natural. Toms can wreak havoc if cymbal hits follow closely behind them. Setting a long release time can turn them down more naturally. Like the attack, the release control can be used to reshape your existing sounds into new ones. Now we have one you might not be familiar with, the hysteresis control. This sets the difference in decibels between the noise gates on threshold and off threshold. An easy way to remember this control's function is to look at the threshold fader, which is the on threshold, and add or subtract the value of the hysteresis control. You'll find this extremely valuable on distorted guitar leads. Set this far enough negative to allow notes to tail off, but not open from amp noise. Underneath the envelope section you'll find the detector controls. This set of parameters lets you choose and modify the signal that determines the behavior of the entire noise gate. The output of this section is the level that the threshold control works on. This need not be the same signal as the audio being gated. This can be a difficult concept to understand. The audio you want flows into and out of the audio inputs on the noise gate. The detector may or may not be the same signal as your relevant audio. The detector takes its input from any signal you would like to use to determine the noise gate's opening and closing level and timing. 30 seconds of playing with it will do more than an hour of explaining it, so go nuts. Here are the controls. First of all is the signaling input drop-down box. From here, you choose which input or inputs the detector will be listening to. This is the place all the tricks can happen. Of course, if you leave this setting defaulted, or normally pick inputs 1 and 2, you'll be using your audio input to tell the gate what to do. Well, let's say the audio on your track was a 50 hertz sine wave. If you chose as your detector input a kick drum track signal, you could have this 50 hertz wave play only when the kick drum hits. This is a great way to add a solid, predictable bottom to a kick drum. The next two faders we have below are the low pass and high pass filters. These narrow down the frequency ranges the detector listens to. Say you're gating a snare drum track. Turn down the low pass to get rid of all the hi-hat and cymbal hash, since a loud hi-hat is not what you'd want to open your snare gate. 
Turn up the high pass to remove low frequencies from the toms and kick drum. Remember, these settings will not filter the actual audio that passes through the gate. It will only modify the way Regate listens to those signals. On the bottom right of the detector circuit is the preview filter output box. Put a check mark in here to listen to the sidechain signal Regate is using as a detector. Sweep the high pass and low pass filters and you can listen to find the resonant and relevant parts of a signal. You can make absolutely sure this way that Regate's detector is ignoring the audio you don't want to open the gate. The last section to mess with here are the output mix controls. Standard stuff. The wet fader determines how much gated signal will leave the noise gate. Normally set this at unity or 0 dB. The dry fader allows the original signal to flow through. This can make for a much more natural sound, leaving some bleed or comfort noise for ambience. And finally, to the far right is the owl. Alright, now you've got the Regate basics down, let's go clean up the audio world.